Many of us have joined Toastmasters to improve our communication skills. We come to our meetings and do our projects to gain self-confidence as a speaker. We eliminate us, ums, and filler words to appear more competent as a speaker. In this session, you will learn about other common mistakes that we make as speakers. You will learn how to discover these mistakes and how to eliminate them. Doing so will help continue to build our confidence and competence as speakers. Please welcome past district director, past region advisor, and a distinguished Toastmaster, Stephen Shaner. Take it away, Steve. Thank you so much, Curtis. Hello, everyone. Think back to the first presentation you gave in Toastmasters. Where would you grade your confidence level? How about your competence level? For me, I'd have to rate both of them pretty low. In fact, in my icebreaker, I had 39 Oz. Now, I don't know if that's a record. But I certainly have improved since then, thank goodness. Most of us have joined this organization to improve our communication skills, especially in the area of speaking. And we do continue to go to our meetings. We do our projects. We fill those roles so that we can gain that self-confidence to do presentations professionally. And we work to eliminate the ahs and ums so we can appear to be more competent as speakers. Today, you will learn some other very common mistakes that we make as speakers. Mistakes that if we eliminated would help us to appear confident and competent at the same time. Are you ready to have some fun? All right, here we go. Many years ago, back in the late 80s, my goodness, that was way less last century, wasn't it? I had the opportunity, I was working as a professional magician in the Los Angeles area, and the opportunity to see Harry Blackstone Jr., his full three-hour stage production. What an incredible show. Harry does wonderful magic. He has this ability to build rapport with his audience that was better than anybody I'd ever seen. The thing I loved most about Harry was his voice. He has one of those deep resonating voices that just sings. Think of a James Earl Jones type of voice. I wanted a voice like that. Did some research. I checked around in places where I could get some voice training. I ended up talking to Columbia School of Broadcasting. If you don't know what that is, it's a school where you go to learn how to be a disc jockey or do voiceover for radio and television. I went in to meet with them and the lady put me in a room with a cassette recorder, a microphone and a page of copy. Copy is just news stories. There was four or five of them on the page. And she said, turn on record and read these. I did it. I started over a couple of times, but when I was done, I knew it was perfection. I was going to be the best they ever heard. She came back in the room. She listened to the entire tape. She sat back, she crossed her arms and she looked at me and she said, you have a severe case of lazy mouth. I didn't know what to say. She then said, if it makes you feel any better, we also call it lazy speech. That didn't make me feel any better. And it was severe. And I wondered, what is this thing she is talking about, lazy mouth? And I'm sure many of you are asking the same question. So let's go through a few examples of lazy mouth. Here's the first one. I need to go to the store today or tomorrow. How did that sound? Sound OK to most of you? There were three samples of lazy mouth in the way I said that statement. I need to go to the store today or tomorrow. I need to go to the store today or tomorrow. Everybody say ta. Everybody say to. to. Much more work. You see how our mouth becomes lazy? Two takes more work to say. I need to go to the store today or tomorrow. That is a great example of lazy mouth. 
Let's try another one. Thank you very much for that wonderful welcome. Anybody hear it? Again, thank you very much for that wonderful welcome. I emphasized it a little bit that time. Yeah, you got it, fur instead of for. Again, everybody say fur. Now say for. It takes more work, doesn't it? When we don't do that, our mouths become lazy and we have lazy mouth. So it's thank you very much for that wonderful welcome. Here's another example. I am honored to introduce Stacy Thomas, our district director. There were two samples of lazy mouth in that one. I'll say it again. I am honored to introduce Stacy Thomas, our district director. First of all, introduce, I've heard introduce, introduce. No, we introduce people. Again, it's that lazy mouth, inter, lazy, intra, lazy, intro, takes more work, introduce. And as Toastmasters, that's one word we certainly should be getting right, shouldn't we? We introduce people, we give an intro. And the other one, our district director. Our, no, it should be our, another one of those lazy mouth samples. Our, easy to say, our takes more work. Let's try this one. I appreciate your attendance. Your, instead of your. Some of you caught that, I see. Very nicely done. Now here's one that I was really bad at. Let's go fishing. How many of you drop your G's? I've heard it a few times, both last night and today, and I was notorious for dropping my G's. Let's go hunting, fishing, camping, something. We lose the G's, and that's being very lazy. And I was a master at all of these, and there are hundreds more. And I'm not going to go into all of them here, but I just wanted to give you a sample of some of them. The tuz, the furs, the introductions rather than intros. There's a great book out by Jeffrey Jacoby or Jacoby, depending on what part of the world you come from. It's called How to Say It With Your Voice. And he talks about developing that deep, resonant voice. But he covers just about every one of these lazy mouth situations, and there are hundreds of them. So I highly recommend his book. It's available on Amazon. I see from Kristen in the chat, we're gonna, yes, we're going to go over yonder. I'm not sure what a yonder is, but I've heard that a lot since I moved to Tennessee. Somebody will have to explain that one to me. Going yonder to go fishing. Yes, absolutely. Very lazy. And again, that book is How to Say It With Your Voice. How to say it with your voice, Jeffrey Jacoby or Jacoby. I'm not sure how he says his, his name, but it's a great book. And it comes with a, a CD as well. So there's some great instruction in that book. How do we discover this? First of all, be aware. I had never heard of lazy mouth before. Now, because I'm aware of it, I hear it constantly. I hear it on TV. I hear it in presentations. I hear it on the news. I hear it everywhere. So be aware of it. Record yourself, just like I did with the cassette tape. Record yourself. These little devices right here probably have a voice recorder built in. If not, you can certainly download a voice recorder app. Practice giving your speeches. Record it, listen to it. Especially if you have your speech written, as you are playing it back, read along with it and then circle those words that you are not enunciating correctly. You can even just take a paragraph out of a book or pull up an article online and read one of those. So practice, practice as much as you can. Now, don't try to tackle all of them at once. And for those of you that are competing tonight or tomorrow, ignore everything I'm saying until Sunday. Do not try and fix these overnight. 
just ignore for now, and then Sunday pick it up and you can start practicing these as well. Read a paragraph, re record it, listen back. Get with somebody that knows about this and have them listen to what you are doing. Get a speech coach. There's all kinds of things that you can do. Do one at a time, move on to the next one. For me, I was bad with the Taz, so I worked on that. Sometimes I would tell my evaluator in Toastmasters, hey, I'm working to eliminate Taz from my vocabulary. Listen for that. Or your ah counter could also listen for those as well. Another way to get rid of these is to slow down. We like to talk quickly. And when we talk quickly, we tend to get lazy with our words. And we do those things that we shouldn't be doing. And that's where the lazy mouth comes from. Slow down. And that does a couple of things. When I've done this session in live groups where I've had people from India and from Asia, they appreciated the comment about slowing down because guess what? They sometimes have a hard time understanding us just like we have a difficult time understanding them sometimes. So we can slow down when we are talking and that'll help us get rid of the lazy mouth, learn to enunciate. It takes a little time to enunciate words and say for instead of fur. I don't generally write my speeches. I generally do an outline. Actually, what I like to use is a mind map. In fact, I have a mind map sitting right here in front of me for this presentation. If you guys have never seen one of those, it looks like this. I put that right there in front of me and I can just look at it. It's an outline and I talk that way. So I don't write my speeches. That makes it a little difficult to go back and listen to and look at the words that I'm doing in my speech. But if you do write your speech, use it as a guide. And when you listen back, circle the words that you're missing. Practice those over and over and over. By slowing down, we get our message across. Using pauses gives people to think about the things that we're saying. It allows them to absorb what we are talking about. Our primary goal when we're giving a presentation is to inform, to entertain, to inspire, or to persuade. Those are our primary goals. Can we do those with lazy mouth? Absolutely. Can we do those with ahs and ums? Absolutely. My message about this is please do not wait until it is perfect. In my Toastmasters career, I have two DTMs. I've done the CC manual 21 times in my professional career, I've given thousands of speeches and done many magic shows. None of them have been perfect. I'm an author of a book. If I waited for that book to be perfect, it would never be, would have been published. You don't need to wait until your presentation, your speech is perfect. Get it out there. Go ahead and do the speaking, even if you do have lazy mouth, even if you do have some ahs and ums slip in. But by doing it over and over and over and doing it more, you will get better at these. You'll eliminate lazy mouth. Eventually, you'll lose the ahs and ums. And your speaking activities will be more on a professional level. Continue to speak every time you can. Take every opportunity you can with this in, within this organization. We have many opportunities that come before us. Take advantage of those. Those are how we build self-confidence. Those are how we build competence as a speaker, which is our ultimate goal. I know many of you thought I was going to be talking about how to be a professional speaker. This is more about taking our speaking activities to a professional level. Level up and do these things. They're not hard. They will not happen overnight. Please don't try to make them happen overnight. Every one of you have stories to tell. The world needs to hear your stories. And the world wants to hear those stories. So get out there. Tell your stories. Let all of us learn from those stories. We heard a great example earlier from Nadia. Great stories, 
great points and we all learn from that. That's what the world wants and that's what the world needs right now. Don't wait for that perfection. Practice, practice, practice. I'll close by again reiterating. We're here to work on two aspects in professional speaking, our confidence and our competence. For the confidence level, do everything you can, speak into the option you can, look for those opportunities, go out and grab them, do them. And for the competence level, continue to look for ways to improve what you're doing, eliminating the odds and ums. And think about those. Don't just go to the meeting, yep, you had 12 of them, okay, that's great. How are you going to eliminate those? Start using pauses. And if you're so inclined, listen to what you're talking about and listen for those examples of lazy mouth and work to eliminate those as well. You are an incredible group of people. Get out there, give your presentations and build them up to a professional level quality. Mr. Toastmaster.